believe I understand who she was and she understood what I was. She had to go her way, I had to go my way. And I meant to return, but I was unable to after notifying that she was not doing too well. Um, she gave me the message. She let me know what I had to do before I had to do it, which is spectacular. So I was only learning under her. It was, it's graceful. Um, that would be something that I would say that no, I would, wouldn't do it all over again, but it's something that everyone must experience at least once in order to understand that life is a it's a forever circling decision more of the story people life should be valued life should be treasured she never know when it won't exist again Most important things you remember are the small, simple moments where you remember having fun or remember that enjoyment. You remember those moments within those seconds. Do you remember the first time you were pushed on a swing? Do you remember the name of the park? Do you remember what the park looks like? Or do you just traditionally know what park you went to as a kid? Just really a question. I'm documenting this because I lose track of every six to seven years, but the details that I miss out on are the ones that really do matter. Say, for example, the next few years when you're born, you say you head into the ages right before kindergarten and you're learning how to function with your body, how to move, how it works. You're learning. Who teaches you that? Do you naturally know how to walk in order to learn how to walk? What upsets me most times as the development happens is someone's always trying to stop you from doing you. It is like your inevitable challenge of growing up. And no one enjoys growing up. So how do you keep that moment forever? How do you make that existing forever? Call it, what do you say? A, call it, call it stuck in a moment, or call it instable, instable mind. What would you call that if it's stuck in a moment forever? for a purpose for it to change. What happens when it never changes? Do you just move on? So, what I've done, I created that moment so that it did change. Just for a moment. That's all you need to become a legacy. Just a moment. This is not a farewell visit. Great idea 
with one woman to try this out as a theory or as an experiment. And within the experiment, she activated an idea or you would call demons and nightmares and creations, beliefs, blasphemy, for a vortex full of corruption, hatred, love, turmoil, adventure, the thrill of living, all gone. Just from sitting in a lotus pose, waiting for the world to change, waiting for a decision to be made, waiting for people to realize they are dreaming their reality. It is a concept, not a daydream. It is their reality. What we did was we took ourselves to a gas station, a lady and I, and we kind of, we spoke with the, the front attendant, spoke with him for a while. He let us know where to go on our direction. We were lost. We were journeying together in the world. Let's say, um, not alone, but as one. I limit myself to a limonite. I am not as human. I think as an intellectual and limited as a limonite. There are things that I can and cannot do. People I can speak to and cannot speak to. And there are certain words I am not supposed to say and I cannot say. Forgive me. You believe this is that really that simple. So please help me understand this. If I'm following correct. You ended the entire world. Based off a concept. You're a retired agent. And only one person know about you. One. And that one person happened to be me. This is not why a farewell. I have been chosen as the individual, now the one person the world, to listen to I'm your introducing myself as the only retired agent. Why you ended exactly the world? What happened Please tell the world me. Ended. When? Now, I'm not going to sit here and ask you to accept the fact. But isn't it so crazy that you could end the world with a simple substance that could be contained within a small container? Strange, huh? I met this rabbi once and he goes and tells me a joke that never, ever changes. A bishop, a supreme leader. A pastor, a rabbi. They walk into this bar. They have a few drinks and they converse amongst each other like gentlemen would. A few hours later, they leave and they walk out and they see this woman. And the woman asks, hello, gentlemen. Is there anything out here that you see that you would like or would change? The pastor steps forward and says, no, it's a glorious day. There's anything that would change. But if you have any questions or would like to speak. Hands him his phone. She puts the number in and stops him from speaking. Hands it back to him. Supreme Leader looks at her, nods his head, and blinks. The bishop, he goes, it is amazing to know that such beauty exists. Shakes her hand and says, no. The rabbi looks at her and says, there isn't anything, surely, that you can say or do that would change this moment for the rest of my life. 
So the woman goes, okay, I'm affiliated with the owner. Head back inside. Ask him for the greatest pot you ever smoked. On the house. Come back out and tell me if there's anything that you would change or anything that you would like that is out here. Can you do that for me? Saw so them headed in. It was the rabbi bishop, supreme leader, and pastor walked back into the bar and surely does what the woman asked. Now, when the value of time, it is not the fact that you value when. It is the value of how you spend that time. I How? How do I do it? <laughs> um, you ever walk around your, you ever walk around the track and have an idea or thought that seems to never ever come true or never actually hits your head or it never seems to become a reality? Now, exist in that second or in that moment or that thought long enough to where it becomes true. I understand. That's why I say I'm a time tracker. I take those, all those moments, individual moments that everyone take for granted and do not appreciate. And what I do, I take that moment and recreate something better. Recreate that moment with the idea that good and happiness and hope is still a thing. This is how I ended the world. Was I sat in those individual moments, created those individual seconds that you do not like or that you do not put up with because you do not have the patience for it. This is the facts. This is what we know. The political action, the political action committees and the political races were going on. When I had done, I watched everybody vote, put into their ballots and cast into their votes. All of their ideas, all of their energy, all of their power, all of their emotions were all just turned into this one election. This was the prime moment to catch to everybody's reaction in, in moments right then and there. I refrain from talking about the time I spent or how long I spent doing it. But what I did was I asked permission to connect to that moment where everyone's mind changed. Huh. I'm a laminite. What we are, we are infinite concepts of what is positive in life. We sometimes are considered the protectors of life. And this is where I believe where my crime comes in. I create the worst nightmare or your worst fear or even the worst situation. And I exist in that moment and create something positive out of it. Is it my fault? No. Is it yours? It's a good possibility. Hmm. An ice cream cone. And you can lick it all you want, but it never goes anywhere. It's an infinite taste, an infinite freeze, an infinite ice cream. One lick turns into an infinite lick. then imagine when that one infinite lick turns into that one infinite disappearance for one second. It is gone. No more. Does not exist. Gone. When did you I'm do a that? time tracker? Not a time traveler. Not a time pirate. What I do exactly is 
and that I, I create and change the outcome of individual seconds, of individual times. I understand that what you believe is, I understand that the impossible is the belief that I am trying to get to change and existing within those one individual seconds. I know that it is bad, but I'm just stating the facts. It is simple and is known as epistemology to you. The theory of knowledge. Imagine if you knew someone who can change time. Not time itself, but the concept of time. That is what I do. That is my crime. And how I did it, I sat down on top of the palace. I interacted with every single person, with every single idea, in every single moment, in every single important spot, position that I needed to be in. I did it in three positions. I walked from a building, I walked to a building, and I sat in a position. And as I sat in this position, I altered the reality of everything that you could ever believe. Do you ever want to know what I believe? It's a good possibility, but do you believe in the impossible? Would you agree to say that the impossible is possible? If you put your mind to it, can you not allow it to exist? When I sat down, my brain was at one focus, one target, one energy, and that was neutral. As a laminite, we take all these concepts, we understand them, but we give not any answers for what we see. We write it down. There was a mirror that I put down numbers and codes even directions of where and colors of coding and the reasons of why certain positions are supposed to stand in certain places at certain times. You believe what you would like to believe. I'm telling you what happens in those one second that no one else exists in. Simple. You walk inside the building, shake hands with everyone that seems important. You think of every scenario that could be dangerous. You exist in those moments. Stand still and let those ideas happen. That is how you transport your mind from one location to the next. This is what makes time trackers its existence possible. That is what we do. And now you are not dead. You are not alive. You are existing within the second. Think with me here. Don't lose me. Okay? Think with me. Now that you are locked inside the box of every idea and concept within this building, all you have to do is link what every other building looks like and every other purpose for these type of buildings. And you create the action and the moments for what is to happen. And let them all agree with one idea and one concept. Again, I create the impossible within those moments. Again, what my crime yes, is. Yes, okay, okay, I get, I, I get it, I get it. You stated the track. My crime is that I am the nightmare that existed and that I did it. I created it. I did not use a serum. That idea was placed on the public for entertainment purposes, marketing health care, marketing a new yes, health Yes, yes, care yes, yes, okay, okay. Everyone you stated the facts. Everyone agrees you told me what the issue is. Sick. You told you me your motive. To the you told you me not. when and where and how. Normal I want to know. Normal trinkets that you do to get well. Now. And that is what everyone... This is what they love. How can you take this moment away to have them cherish that individual second that we are taking advantage of? This, I am not the one taking it away. 
I do not have that power that takes it away. Yes, yes. What I do, I am only here to obtain it. One makes a decision. If I'm not dead, then what am I? I harness every single one of those ideas and I take them and I use them what as What second my do we exist in? Way of saying this is what they like. Is this it your is second? They agree with the moment. Are you finished yet? Are you following me? If you create a change. That is in you can outcome. call it telepathy. And you create all these things within seconds. When do you ever do it? You take the intellectual properties of simple cognitive processing. The logistical map. The theory Give of me the an genius example. theory. The theory of everything. The theory of knowledge. Epistemology. You need to focus on these terms. These are what creates the idea of what makes this exist. Do you not agree? Am I losing you? Have I lost you somewhere? It's fine. Uh, sure, I because don't later, know what to have to do anything about those the story, four but sure. Gentlemen, the rabbi, bishop, supreme leader, and pastor return from out of that bar. And they find that woman still standing there. The rabbi looks at her and goes, surely this doesn't change anything about us shakes her hand kisses her on the right cheek and leave the bishop comes up to her and says it is amazing that we get to meet such a beautiful woman as you shakes her hand kisses her on the right cheek and heads out the supreme leader goes and do the same thing but goes up to her kisses her on the right cheek and just leaves. The pastor comes up and says, it's a glorious day and it is great to meet you. I'll give you a phone call sometime. Maybe we can sit and chat because there are some things I would like to change and that I do want from out of this okay. world. So, so say suppose you did go into this lady's office, Kisses on into the this lady's cheek. place. Once you made it inside of there, walks away. What did you see? Did you see anything important? She calls him. What I want to know is, once you were in there, the pastor what was the main the important thing that you night. saw? Don't play games with me, okay? And they end up dating. Don't. I'm not into playing these games. And they have a glorious see, life. I'm after the next second. Glorious. I feel like we've been repeating this second forever. A few years later, just to he create pops the question. another moment or another second. Don't play games. They're with me. to be wed. Soon. This is not a joke. Now, what I would do in this moment, I would take out the fact that they conversated for so long. That would never happen because that is a moment that is treasured. If you're a defender of light, protector, in the darkness, right. you are to hold every single moment that is cherished, no matter how it affects the moment. You take that moment away. Again, this is not a farewell visit. Okay. Are you following me? This is not a you? joke. Yes, I believe I am right. faster than most people and faster in most moments. It is a contradiction within itself. To be able to move slower and to be able to act within those seconds. It contradicts a lot of things. My apologies. But what happens is, in those individual moments and seconds where I act in, I create another second, another moment, another existence, another hope, right. another positive outcome. Again, I am not here to damn anyone. And this is not a farewell visit. We are existing in that moment. We are creating that moment. Everyone is done, finished. They have completed their life cycle. 
everyone's nightmares are over. That one fear that everyone fears is the end. If you bring that to a moment for a second, only for a second, will they truly accept the fact what you have just done is gave them an ultimatum to either live or die or make a decision to live or try to coexist. It doesn't work that way. I'm here to do one job. And I've done it. They've all left. They finished their purpose. Now we just have you. During a conversation in a group of people, I try my best to be so many people for everyone and make them so happy. But what I realize is everyone has their own individual opinions and individual actions that changes the reality of what is supposed to happen because of their opinions. So if you tell them what they want to hear and create that existing moment again that you've created out of your own idea, that there is a powerful thing for someone to actually appreciate. I did not create this world. You created this world. Remember that. Because the pastor did as well. We get to this building. And inside the building, a security guard meets us and we try out our abilities of creating that second or changing a second for something positive. And the security guy approaches me, tells me to leave. She knows who she's here for. She can go. But I had to go. I must leave. That moment where I realized her authority was not that she had more power. But she knew someone actually in the building. The pastor invited the rabbi the bishop and the supreme leader to the wedding. And the rabbi, he's doing a ceremony. He goes, kisses her in the right cheek. He says, surely it does not change anything about us. Kisses the pastor on the right cheek. and says, surely it does not change anything about us. And he continues on with the sermon. He weds them and they are now husband and wife. Supreme Leader comes up, kisses her in the hand, walks away. Bishop comes up, shakes the pastor's hand, kisses her in the right hand, says it's amazing to have the two of you in this beautiful world. Walks away. The two live a very prosperous life. A few years later, they had a bad car accident. Pastor didn't make it. At the funeral, the woman goes up to the grave. She's sobbing. She's crying. And the pastor, he's, everyone's at the funeral. And the rabbi says, surely, this doesn't change anything about us. The bishop comes up and says, it's amazing to have such a beautiful creature with us at one point in life. 
and leads. Supreme Leader comes up to the casket, stands next to her and says, there's anything you need, just let me know. Kisses her on the right cheek and leaves. Do you know who she came in contact with after this? Believe it or not, the bishop had more to say. Again, telepathy, it is a thing. And my only crime is, I created the nightmare. But I have the authority to, I am certified to, by the Council of the Lamanite. Would you like to meet them sometime? Or maybe you already have. Can you exist in multiple places at multiple times? Is that a thing? Or is that delusional? You tell me. How do you really feel about this? Do not sugarcoat this. How do you really feel about this? You created the end. You created the virus. You created the idea. And now look at us. Everyone is taking the idea and they have scared each other off. Now everyone's gone. You have taken a real actual virus, created a cure, destroyed the cure, and created the instant moment where everyone fears, which is the fear of nothing existing. I am not sorry, but I do expect you to accept the fact that it all comes to an end. But this isn't a farewell visit. Remember that. As Lamanites, we bring the positive of your life, a child's life, a dog's life, a life of a tree, the expectancy of a child, the growth of a tree, the rise and the fall of a country. I believe it's Romulus and Remus. Someone once told me you cannot create a legacy or a kingdom overnight, but these two did. One decided we should have control the other decided we should be unstoppable. That there is chaos in itself. How amazing is that? This is what the bishop thrived off of. The amazement of reality, the amazement of the life that exists. Take that and do it. It is a passionable thing that you should remember. Because she did. She took a visit the one over to the bishop's house to have a few words, have a drink or two, discuss good times. One thing led to another, they begin 
becoming more intimate. After a bit, after a while, more drinks, more emotions, more connections, intercourse happened. They never dated. It never was a relationship. But they've created a child. The bishop calls her up and says, I'm here for you, always, and will be. If you ever need a friend to speak with, if you just ever need me to come over, I'll be here for you. She agrees. The bishop becomes ill one day. And he's, he's down on this, down to his last life. The child is being born. She goes into pregnant, she goes into labor. She comes to the hospital and in the hospital, the bishop's down the hall. The rabbi runs in and says, your child is being born. Speaks to the bishop, the bishop can't move. So he starts pushing their cart over to the next room. The rabbi says, surely this does not change anything about it. The bishop yells, oh, it's an amazing day to be alive. I'm so grateful. It is a beautiful moment for us all. He goes over to the room. The rabbi sees the child coming out. He sees the head and the head pops out. Oh, there goes the baby. Oh, and now they're pushing further and pushing faster down the hallway. And the baby pops out. And there's this loud cry of excitement and of anointance of life into the room. The rabbi stops. Looks at the woman. Kisses her on the cheek and says, surely this does not change anything about us. He leaves the room. The rabbi makes his energy, stands up, walks into the room, looks at the child, looks at her. Said, It's amazing to see such beauty in this life. He kisses her on the forehead. He kisses the child on the forehead. He walks back to his bed. It's rolled off to his room. The next morning he dies. Supreme Leader shows up to the hospital to show appreciation and show his condolences. Says to the woman, there's anything you need, I'm here for you. Kisses her on the forehead, looks at the child, and leaves. A few years goes, goes by and the child grows up to be a little bit older. She begins kindergarten. She grows through middle school. She makes it to high school. Supreme leader, he starts speaking with the mother. The child believes that supreme leader is her father. The child gets sick one day, heads into the hospital. Rabbi shows up. The woman's upset. She's hitting, she's kicking at him. Says, why haven't you told her yet? I refuse to tell her anything, but surely this doesn't change anything about us. Pushes her away and goes into the room. He speaks to the child, counsels the child, bring goodwill to the child. The goodwill that we do within this world does not bring anything but more moments, 
That's more pain. That's more hardship. But it is never a farewell. It is just a visit of the seconds that we do not appreciate, the moments that we do not cherish. Are you following me? Do I still have your attention? We make it back to the ladies apartment, her and I. And I'm not sure if you remember But she hasn't been asleep in a total of three days. Three days go by and you and the lady are still there. You're still with each other. You're still filming. You're having conversation about dead people, alive people, things you can do, things you can't do. You start exercising your abilities. And the moment where it changes is when you create the idea that you can get away with global extinction. The largest thing that one could ever do. Have you ever created an angel before? Would their hair color not be the same color of their wings? Would they not be angry just as much as you believe they are happy? Would you confuse their happiness with pure joy? Would you confuse their happiness with insanity? How do you view them is the real question. I can move faster because I do not think as you do. I am limited to what I can do. But I am not the same as you. I can do more than you within those one simple seconds. It's all about motion, you see. What we know is what we see. Those simple things of 11 million megabits per seconds that we see per image, unconsciously processing every single detail that we see by color, shape, size, and position by motion. Imagine stopping that motion. Do you think that could exist then within that moment? Um... You ever remember growing up from birth until the moment that you do remember? Say for example, if you're a child, do you remember your birth? What was the first thing that you can remember about pain? Was it the sight of light or was it the sound that hit your ears first? Or even was it the physical contact of something that you're not even familiar with, like the grasp of another human or the spanking of the hand of a doctor? Do you ever remember those moments? Do you remember that first moment where you felt alive? What if I said that you can remember those moments? So in order to prove that, you will have to make those moments exist over and over and over again. Would you remember you as a child? So you move on as you grow up as a child. 
And as a child, you remember simple things like uh, scratching your knee or bumping your toe into the couch or bumping your toe into a wall. Um, when these things happen, you remember them because, ouch, it hurt. Or going to a, a special event or going to a theme park. You remember these things, right? Would you not remember these things? Why would you remember these things? So we would create these moments over and over again in order to understand how do you manipulate this moment in order for something to change or to happen. It becomes a ritual belief. Then further, when you become a little bit older, you start to believe in this ritual that you set your life on based on the first thing that you were afraid of because the first thing that brought you to life was either lights, action, connection, or pain. And this is what brings everyone together within they are one because everyone can say they felt at least one of these. Moments. Do you really believe that moments can exist without anyone thinking of them? Or do you just believe that things just happen? What I have done, I have created those moments over and over and over again and placed them on repeat. And I've taken that and turned it into an idea or full concept, a full plan on how to do it correctly. Now, it may seem wrong in most places, in most situations or more spots but no one's going to make it out alive I could either keep it ended to where there is no more existence or keep a sample in order to restart it at will to where there always be a new creation All right, my dude, we have only four minutes on here. I have only five minutes of dating this. So, um, I guess this would be my check-in of data entry. Because there was a, there was a rabbi that I'm associated with. He comes up to me, stabs me, leaves me outside the hospital, goes inside, turns around and says, surely this doesn't change anything about us. Heads inside the hospital. A few moments he comes back out, runs right past me, hops into his car and leaves. Now, at this funeral, the rabbi always tells this joke that never changes. And so, there was a, a girl, she was in high school. She gets into a car accident. Her mother's pretty down about it, pretty sad. And the Supreme Leader comes to the hospital 
he arrives and he goes to the mother's room, looks at her, stands in the doorway, nods his head and blinks and walks out of the doorway, head out of the hospital. A few minutes later, the rabbi shows up, sees the Supreme Leader, stabs him, kisses him on the cheek and says, surely this doesn't change anything about us. and goes inside the hospital, goes to see the mother, the widow mother, and says, I'm sorry, but sure this doesn't change anything about us. Kisses on the right cheek, he leaves the hospital. A few years later, the woman, she goes on her, a travel adventure. She's hiking through the mountains and she's camping one night and she's bitten by a snake. And it's a poisonous snake. So she goes to open this book. She looks at the book and she says, ha, huh. it never changes. Rolls over to her back and she perishes. Now the rabbi tells this joke at the funerals that he attend every time because it is truly a joke that never changes. But it's the reality of life that some things just do not change. Just as people may not change and they have the right to make that decision to change or to not to change. And what I have done, I just created the moments to be able to keep those moments changed long enough to appreciate the two ideas. One concept, put them together. And the two ideas is you cannot make everyone happy. And Nothing is impossible. The concept of you put your mind to it, you can have it done. Now, I've, I've stated the facts. That's the facts. Now, can you remember any, any facts that you could recall along recall too about life joke that never changes because someone's always trying to stop you. The bishop was once stopped. The rabbi was Oops. once huh, stopped. Supreme leader. It never changes. And she dies. And the rabbi tells the same joke at every funeral. And he reads the passage that she opens up to, that she believes that the joke never changes because life always goes on. Life continues to move on. Now, strangely enough, the rabbi never mentions the fact of 
him drawing a knife out on the supreme leader. It never was a thing. But to create an idea so simple yet disagreeable, it can be measured. relative motion you have within a simple second. You take this and you can derive it from your known math or the known equation of relativity. Mm. But to be okay with the understanding of why it makes sense or why it exists, you would need to do the math of it and also do the physical work of the equation. It's not something you just see, it's something you do. Um, I will say this has been a great experiment. I don't know if I would ever do this experiment again. I don't recommend it. But how else would you recreate something in order for it to be new or fresh? Again, and what would you use? What would you do it for? What would be the purpose? Greatest question of all time, right there. What would be the purpose? After creating a useful amount of data and a useful amount of information that goes with the data, how much would you need in order to restart it all over again? Right now, we have um, a standard calculation. It is not an estimated calculation. It is using specific math, specific numbers, broken down into simple variables, uh, completed with familiar equations and relevant formulas in order to produce a product or an outcome to be seen. Um, if there is something that people want to see that this exists or this works, then you have to do it one time, one time only. But you have to create a product to where people remember that moment. Yeah. It's quite extraordinary, really. Forgive me for doing it. I guess the best way to try to avoid most of the outcomes, because again, this is not a farewell visit. You can avoid these outcomes. You create more valued moments as more torture. You don't show appreciation for the life that's already here. There's more creations. So you see you're, you're a little bit stuck within a time loop here. So some people say, how do you create one side of thinking? You don't, you just put up a wall and call it square. Eventually, it'll connect again because just what it is is lemonescate. Lemonescate. 
an infinite sign. It was only created to show that there is the possibility of the impossible and that people do fear the impossible. Apologies. That's all I have. If I were to end 